there is a chance of getting off the streets. And that's what I hold on to every day is today the day that my tickets get pulled for last week it was being punched in the face next week i could be stabbed week after that may just be a clean week i could be shot at i could be shot each morning i pray that never happens to me what do you think a streets person most valuable moment in their day is Come on, come on. Don't be afraid. There's no wrong answer. For some, for some, it helps get me going. What's yours? The fact that I get to wake up every morning. Mom, pop. Are you too my mean? actual name is Steven Albertson, which I hate both my first and last name, but more down here I'm known as Victor, uh, Vic to most. Um, I'm 20, uh, been diabetic for 16 years, been on the streets for a year and a half now, and I don't regret it. A lot of people down here regret being on the streets and why they're down here. <sighs> Typical day is waking up at before the crack of dawn at 6 a.m. Going down to the mission, getting an okay breakfast. Um, generally, I'll head up to the BK near the library and I'll sit out there and talk with a couple of friends depending on who shows up, but for the most part, I just chill in there. A lot of people's reasons for being out here is for family, all the young people, that the youth that is. Um, a lot of them is because of family, but like also most of them are from, you know, just having issues with, with themselves, you know. They have a hard time believing in themselves and believing what they can do. You know? My parents ditched me on their way back to a different state. They just dropped me off. Yeah, I'm in foster care, so I was in foster for a while, so. And you aged out now? Yeah, I aged out of foster care. My 18th birthday at 4 a.m., my dad knocked on the door, told me to pack my stuff, and told me to get out. I asked him where I was supposed to go, and he said, don't worry about it, load your stuff in the truck. And so I did. And he drove me all the way down here to Magna. I was a runaway, and played straight up, and um, my parents abused me and stuff, and so um, the cops found me about, let's say, three weeks later. And then I had to go back to Provo, and then I was in a I was in a lockout place until they told me what I could, what I could do. And then they found out I was abused and stuff, and then they brought me back out here. Vic's been helping me through the whole thing. He's been looking out for me. He's always been there. He was he he told me like what I need to be doing out here, and he he's just always there. And um, it's just I don't know. It's kind of hard to be out here. I'm just barely 18 years old, and I really don't want to be out here. And but there's nowhere else for me to go, and so just live out the best I can. Reason why I got kicked out of my place of living, I got caught with my girlfriend in my room. But I found out her herself was couch surfing like I was with friends and family. I'm like, okay, better come do that at my place than where you could possibly get molested, raped, murdered, several just handfuls of other things. 
my mom walks in. This is the third time I've done this now, so she thinks I'm being stupid and it's lost leading me. This is the first two, two times I went why it was, so that's why I got kicked out before. But this third and final time, it's because I was trying to be the nice guy. Then we went up to one of the shelters up in Ogden. That was my first dose of reality of me being actually homeless. sleeping wherever, I guess, wherever it feels safe. Um, getting up, pretty much just coming over here because this opens at nine. And I'll just have like cereal over here or whatever. And just chill here pretty much until four, a little bit after four, because this center closes at five, because that's pretty much all we have is this center, I guess. Are you willing to use the resources? Here, I, I mean, I'm dressed every day. I'm clean every day, thanks to the VOA, thanks to the road home. I'll come down here, talk to people, hang out. Depending on either the weather or, in my case, an injury, I'll just sit around here and talk to people. Where's my hat? You guys still have my hat? Yeah, I have to open it. Vic, you missed it. What? I'm sorry, but a little boy went to go shoot that child molester in the ass with the soft air gun. Oh my God, where is that little kid? He's over there. Dude, that dude is that little dude is. Last night he, he came up towards my us. baby. Uh, he came and he was rolling a cigarette. He went and lay down. And he like, yeah. Like I was saying, Nana is one of my close and dear friends down here. I'd kill for her. I'd die for her. Even more so, I would live for her. And vice versa. I had just recently come down to this area like two or three months ago and I've been liking it ever since because you know you see more people who are alike you know like like you and you're not afraid to talk to, to them about your problems because you know you converse and they they help you know keep you sane. My name is Ginger Phillips um, I'm a part of Operation Shine America which is um, we raise awareness of the homeless youth epidemic in America. Something that they have taught me is that, um, that they can actually um, become, even though that they have been abandoned and have lost the love of their family, they have taught each other how to love within their community out on the streets. No, I've fought off two people already that has that has already. Well, one was in the park. Uh, he had come to me with a knife on my throat. Luckily, I know self-defense, so I defend myself very well. I elbowed him twice in the ribs and then three times in the face, and he was down on the ground. I ran off. I went. You know, you have to be tough around. Here. This park is a dangerous place around the clock. At night, a very unsafe place. I won't go there at night because it's not worth risking my life over. And it's not worth hiring my chances against death. A lot of the people down here are druggies. They do drugs in the bathrooms, like crack. They smoke crack in the bathrooms. Yeah, I, I, would, I would love to have people. somebody that live up, lives up there in the mountains come down and trade shoes with me for a day. They wouldn't. They there's no way they'd be able to handle it. Yeah, I'd like someone to have us live in their house for a week and have them live in here for a week and see how we feel, how they feel after living in here for a week. Because I guarantee you, when each and every single one of us get off the streets, we're gonna appreciate that couch that much more that TV that much more, that bed, that piece of food. And honestly, 
I can't wait for the first time. I get to put my own feet up in my own place and call it mine. After leaving here, a lot of them go to the library to hang out, find a safe place. Uh, a lot of them camp or squat in abandoned buildings. Um, so just trying to stay safe. A lot of it is survival after they leave here. A lot of our kids have gone through trauma or are experiencing that, um, just living on the streets. And so they provide just kind of as needed uh, counseling or support. We also help them get on any housing list um, that they can qualify for. Some people just need a break. You know, and for someone to believe in them, just one person. And a lot of our kids, they, um, who knows, they can go through days, weeks, months without uh, one person even acknowledging that they exist. And so we want to be that um, for them, a place to go where they feel heard and seen and helped. Yeah, help it out. Since I was eight years old, I had always been praying and hoping out, hoping to someday find my dad because of the crap my mom had filled my brain with. You know, she had told me he had raped her just to have me, and you know, it kind of affects the girl whenever she's had that happen to her by stepdad and stuff like that. And. Uh, but I went to the foster home, they got a non he got an anonymous letter, he came out and got me. I was out of that place in a week. It, I, I remember the day exactly because it was probably one of the best days of my life. This is a kind of in correspondence with a baby I was going to have five months. But then my dad threw me down the stairs. So, um, yeah, it's, it's called, it's a blessing anyways. Nine months to go until caretaking and loving is untold. Holding the joys of life forever in my arms. Nothing else mattering but that little life in my arms. As time goes by, that little life grows and grows. Filling my life with joy as it grows. Father, no, father not there in any way, shape, or form. Yet that little life, it's a blessing anyways. It's a very dark, cold world, and it's even more dark and cold when you're homeless. You'll meet some harsh people. One time I was sitting, and I asked this one, it was during one of the festivals downtown, and I asked this lady, hey, is there any chance you could spare a dollar? And she freaked, she's like, why don't you get a fucking job, you no good fucking dirt bag? I'm like, hey, you know what, you have a nice night. That's all I said. Then after that, it's back to outside the shelter to find a place to sleep and hope a cop don't wake you up in the morning and give you a trespassing ticket. The youth out there are in unsafe places. They need a shelter. Um, the youth don't like to go to the adult shelter, and the only youth that can go to the adult shelter are the ones who are 18 and older. But when they go to the adult shelter, it's not very safe. What we learned when we were on our walk is that storefronts are really walls. And so imagine yourself as a homeless youth on the street. And you can't go you know, into the street, of course, it's the street. You can't go into any of the storefronts either because you're gonna get kicked out. So what is a city to you? It's a labyrinth of walls. That means that every single homeless youth in Salt Lake City, Utah, or in Utah and the surrounding states um, as well, they absolutely 100% of the time are going to be sleeping on the streets or in unsafe abandoned buildings under bridges or with unsafe people um, trading sex. When I'm um, getting done with dinner with my partner at night and I'm sitting down to watch TV and I have a homeless youth call me and I'm sitting, and this was in winter, sitting in a warm apartment just having gotten done eating dinner and I know that I've done all these things, it, it doesn't matter when that homeless youth calls me and says, Chloe, in two days I'm out on the street again. All I could do is say, Here's the drop-in center. Maybe we can find you a tent. Yeah, a tent. <laughs> Some of us were fortunate enough to sleep inside. 
me, I prefer not to, and honestly, that wall is my bed. Just where I can find space for the night. I've seen what I've gone through. I've seen what my friends go through. I don't want to see others go through a hard time like that. I have met the most interesting of interesting people down here, and I wouldn't give them up for anything. They're friends and their family. And that's what's important down here is find a family connection. Find a family connection and things are a little easier. <laughs> you with the crutch, not with the crutch. I tapped you with the crutch. Ah, oh, son of a monkey. People tell me, why, how are you so happy now? I'm like, because I, I learned from it. I don't use it to use a crutch to keep getting by. I make sure I, I learn from it because it's not, it's not helpful if, why would you go through it and not learn something, right? I don't know what it is about me and whenever I write. It's just like, I kind of escape everything. Instead of doing what all these other people do out here and get drunk, high off the drugs and stuff, I stick with the writing and stuff that help, keeps me sane. Okay, this is a poem that I wrote for this whole organization. I wrote it the day that they first came to the center. Um, it's called Streeters. There's a star that follows each and every one of us. It doesn't matter who we are or what we look like. It only matters that we're compassionate in ways that others can't recognize. We look at those who have everything, but are jealous of the connections they don't have when it comes to family. Those of us who are streeters consider each other family. We know it don't matter each other's race, culture, or ethnicity because we know it, what's inside. Each of us have feelings stronger than anyone can comprehend. Love, passion, strength, courage, ambitions, fear, motivation, determination, understanding. Something families should have. Our streeter families stick together no matter what till the end. Having everything isn't always a good thing. It blinds you from what's real and true. Looking back, each one of us at some point in time had everything. But then people who we thought to be our true family turned their backs on us. Then we were able to see the true things that really matter. How can you have everything and know you have everything until you lose what you did have? Growing up, we all hope to have people who care and understand and accept who we really are. Us streeters were more different than any other out there. We each have something to give and something to show. We know that there is more to life than materialistic things. We are streeters and know what life's all about. Now you who have everything, can you come up to a streeter and say that you have everything and be sure? Come to us and we'll tell you, you ain't got nothing. I've seen the way kids grow up on the streets. I've seen everything, you know. But now, thanks to all that knowledge, I have a place of my own as of last night. And I was able to get through it, you know. And uh, so, you know, just having that knowledge that I've gotten through it pretty much, I'm still on the way to recover to get out of homelessness. But you know what? It's, it's a long road. It's a long path. You're always going to have that road to take. Life isn't a one road thing. You got to fork every quarter mile. Each turn takes you a different way. You're the hero or you're the victim. And that's what being homeless is. You can be the hero or you can be the victim. I've chosen not to be the victim.